let's start with the working fluid properties this is the first exercise and in which it is asked to compare two power plants which are operating using a different fluids one is using water as a working fluid and the other is using an organic fluid whose, whose uh, specifications are given and it is demanded that we calculate the thermodynamic efficiencies, highest volume ratios, and compare the power productions. Okay, you should take a minute and read the question before we proceed to solve it. Okay, let's start with the solution. We are given with the Delta H for water two zero one four kilojoule per kilogram. I'm just going to write some missing values of some missing parameters. Similarly, the specific heat of constant pressure of steam is given as 2.6 kilojoule per kilogram we will also need the specific heated constant pressure of liquid water which is 4.2 kilojoule per kilogram also we will be needing the critical temperature of water which is 374 degrees centigrade and the critical pressure of water which is 220 bar okay the values of all the parameters on the organic fluid sides are already given so we're going to start with the cycle now it is given that the cycle is a rank kind cycle so first we're going to start with the layout of the rank kind cycle let's start with the boiler and there is the turbine then there is condenser and then there is the pump this is a simple layout of the Rankine cycle these are the directions I'm going to label some points in here this is one this is two let's label a point in here I will explain this later when I draw the TH diagram. This is 4 and this is 5. Okay, now if we start with the TH diagram, we have The axis and x axis temperature and entropy. So <clears throat> the water we have like this, the dome is like this, and this is one, this is point two, this is cycle. Point two. This is point three, at which the evaporation starts. This is point four, and this is point five. Okay. Now we're going to calculate. It is required that we calculate and compare the efficiencies of both the cycles. So, 
we'll write the basic formula to calculate the efficiency formula for efficiency is there are a number of ways you can calculate the efficiency but we are going to use this formula it's turbine minus delta h pump divided by delta h evaporator plus delta h economizer okay out of these we know that delta h evaporator and we can assume that delta H pump is negligible because the pump work is negligible. So we have to calculate the delta H economizer and the delta H turbine. So let's start with the delta H economizer. Let's calculate it using Cp of liquid water multiply by delta t. We know the upper and the lower limits in which the cycle is operating which is 170 and 40 so delta h economizer is equal to 4.2 multiplied by 170 minus 40 which comes out to be 540 kilojoule per kilogram. Okay, now we have to calculate the turbine, the enthalpy change in the turbine. For this we use the enthalpy balance. Okay. Enthalpy balance can be written as delta H greater because enthalpy has been added in this plus delta H economizer plus delta H pump minus delta H condenser minus delta H turbine is equal to zero okay so we have already find that delta H pump approximately zero. So we only have to calculate the delta H of condenser in order to calculate the delta H of turbine. Because delta H of turbine can now be written as delta H pressure plus delta H economizer minus delta H condenser so to calculate the delta H of condenser we are going to use this formula is equal to T5 which is temperature of the condenser delta s 5 to 1 okay so in order to calculate this we have to calculate delta s 5 to 1 to calculate delta s 5 to 1 we follow the same approach as we have followed before delta s 5 to 1 is equal to delta s 1 to 2 plus delta s 2 to 3 plus delta s 3 to 4 so delta s 5 to 1 is equal to we can cancel out this 1 to 2 because this is negligible this is the pump work we are ignoring the pump work so delta s 2 to 3 can be written as Cp ln T3 by T2 plus delta H evaporator 
उसके बाद में टी थ्री सो डेल्टा एस फाइव टू वन कम्स आउट टू बी put plug in all the values which we have comes out to be 6.005 so using this you can calculate delta h condenser sorry delta h condenser is equal to t5 t5 which is 40 plus 273 multiplied by 6.005 this comes out to be 1879.6 kilojoule per kilogram okay so now we have the delta H of condenser so we can calculate the delta H of turbine. So the delta H of turbine is delta H evaporator, which is 2014 plus delta H equanimizer, which is 546 minus delta H condenser which is 1879.6 so this comes out to be 680.4 kilojoule per kilogram now that we have the delta H of turbine and delta H of economizer and delta H of aperture we can calculate the efficiency the efficiency is delta H turbine divided by delta H evaporator plus delta H economizer which is 680.4 divided by 2014 plus 546 this comes out to be 26.5% Now we'll move to the organic cycle. Okay. So let's start with the TS diagram of the organic organic Rankine cycle. You know, for the organic fluids, as the complexity is increases, the dome is shaped more like this. So, the cycle which we'll draw will be like this. Okay. We'll label the points. One, two, three, four, five, and six. This right here is the D superheater region. This is the turbine, this is the boiler, this is also the boiler, this is the pump, and this is the condenser. And this is the TS diagram. Okay. So, first we need to know the evaporation enthalpy. To calculate evaporation enthalpy, we are going to use the principle of corresponding states. And the principle of corresponding state states that delta H over R divided by molar mass is equal to constant. So we can write delta H H2O. evaporation divided by R over molar mass of water sorry there is also a critical temperature here multiplied by T critical H2O 
is equal to delta H evaporation organic fluid divided by R over molar mass organic fluid multiplied by T critical organic fluid. So simplifying this expression we get delta H evaporation H2O multiplied by molar mass of H2O divided by T critical H2O is equal to delta H evaporation organic fluid multiplied by molar mass of organic fluid divided by T critical organic fluid okay we know the values of delta H evaporation which is 2014 multiplied by molar mass of H2O is 18 we know that T critical of H2O is 374 if we add the if we convert it to Kelvin by adding 273.16 we get 647 is equal to delta H yep. organic fluid multiplied by 200 which is given and the T critical which was given I've converted it in Kelvins so delta H evaporation of organic fluid comes out to be 180.13 kilojoule per kilogram we have calculated the first thing which will we need in this process now we need to calculate the delta H economizer which is which can be written as delta H economizer is equal to CP into delta T in this case we're going to use the CP of liquid which is given of organic fluid so delta H economizer comes out to be 1.5 multiplied by 170 minus 40 which is the temperature of maximum and the minimum temperature of the cycle and it comes out to be 195 kilojoule per kilogram so we have the delta H temperature and the delta H of economizer if we write the enthalpy balance for this cycle it is written as delta H economizer plus delta H evaporator plus delta H pump minus delta H condenser minus delta H turbine minus delta H D superheater which I mentioned was a point from 5 to 6 it is equal to 0 so we have calculated the delta H evaporator and the delta H economizer which is the heat input and we also know that delta H pump is equal to zero because we are letting the pump work now we are left with three things that we need to calculate delta H condenser, delta H turbine and delta H D superheater okay all these processes except for the delta H condenser delta H turbine and delta H D superheater are in the superheated region so we need to calculate the specific heat of the vapor for the organic fluid so to do this we are again going to use the principle of corresponding states which states that 
delta cp is equal to vapor of h2o over r over molar mass of h2o is equal to delta cp liquid to vapor organic fluid divided by r over molar mass of organic fluid simplify this we get uh, cp delta cp liquid to vapor of h2o multiplied by molecular mass of h2o is equal to delta cp liquid to vapor of organic fluid multiplied by molecular mass of organic fluid so we know that cp of water of liquid water is 4.2 minus 2.6 which is of steam multiplied by 18 which is the molecular mass of h2o and the cp of liquid of organic fluid in the liquid form is 1.5 minus cp of vapor of organic vapor multiplied by 200 so we get cp vapor of organic fluid comes out to be 1.356 now we can calculate the delta H of the D superheater, which is delta H D superheater to C P vapor of organic fluid into T five minus T six. We know this, we know T six, but we need to calculate T five. To calculate T5, we have to calculate the pressure ratios, and we're going to use this formula, which is T4 over T5 is equal to P4 over P5 raised to power theta. Now, to calculate the pressures, we have to use the Antoine equation, which is stated as ln of p is equal to a minus b over t so we can use it in the reduced form ln pr is equal to a steric minus a steric over t reduced so i'm going to calculate the pressure issues for the water cycle and I'm going to use the same pressure ratios in the organic Rankine cycle. So to calculate the pressure ratios, first I'm going to calculate the T reduced and the P reduced. So the T reduced 4.4 4 comes out to be at point 0.4 we have the temperature of 443 443 divided by 607 which is the critical temperature of water and comes out to be 0 0.729 and P reduce now I'm going to use this TR to calculate the PR. To calculate PR, I write E raised to power. As you know, A steric is 7. So it is 7 minus 7 divided by 0 0.729, which comes out to be P reduced is equal to. 0 0.074 and to calculate P we multiply P critical multiply by P reduced which is the P4 so I get 220 bar 
multiplied by 0 0.074 B4 comes out to be 16.3 bar. Similarly, I'm going to calculate B5 and B5 comes out to be 0 0.3 bar. I'm sure you can calculate it yourself. So now the pressure ratio P4 or P5 is 16.3 divided by 0 0.3 which is 54.3. We go back above and see this equation We have the pressure ratios, but we don't have the theta. We also have to calculate theta to complete this equation. So we have already calculated the CP vapor or this organic liquid CP vapor, which is 1.356. So if I calculate it in molar terms, it comes CP vapor molar 1.356 multiplied by 200, which is CP vapor in molar terms is 271.2. So we know that CP vapor in molar terms minus CV vapor in molar terms is equal to R. So we can calculate CV vapor in molar terms is equal to CP vapor in molar terms minus R. So CV vapor in molar terms is equal to 271.2 minus 8.314. So CV vapor in molar terms comes out to be 262.8 okay so now we can use it as gamma is equal to CP vapor in molar terms divided by CV vapor in molar terms which comes out to be 271.2 divided by 262.8 it comes out to be 1.03 theta is equal to gamma minus 1 over gamma which comes out to be 0 0.03 now we have theta we have P4 we have P5 now we can easily calculate this term which we were waiting for okay now we can calculate T4 and uh, sorry, now we can calculate T5. So let's write it as T5. I'm going to write it here with red. T5 is equal to T4 multiplied by We write it as P4 over P5 raised to the power minus theta. Okay. So T5 is equal to T4, which is 170 plus 273, which is 443, multiplied by P4 over P5 was 54 something let us check 54 point it was 54.3 so we're going to put it 54.3 raised to the power 0 0.03 
think I'm doing it wrong. Sure, minus 0 0.03. So we get T5 equal to 392.9. In Kelvins, if we calculate it in degree centigrade, we get 119.9 degree centigrade. This is the T5. We required T5 in this formula, which we are not now going to calculate it. I'm going to use blue for this. Delta H, D superheater, is equal to Cp vapor 1.356 multiplied by 119.9 sorry, 0.9 minus 40, we get 108, sorry, 108.3 kilojoule per kilogram. We have the delta HD superheater, we have the delta H. We have the delta H two superheater now. We have the delta H evaporator. We don't have the delta H of condenser and the delta H of turbine. Delta H of condenser, uh, sorry, delta H of turbine can be easily calculated now. I'm going to calculate this in the very last. Okay. Delta H of turbine is equal to Cp vapor multiplied by T4 minus T5. This is T5. T5. We get Cp vapor is 1.356 multiplied by 170 minus 119 we get 69.15 kilojoule per kilogram to calculate the efficiency we have to get delta H turbine divided by delta H evaporator plus delta H economizer we have 69.15 divided by the delta H evaporator the delta H evaporator which we calculated up there somewhere which is 180 and delta H is 195 so we are going to add 180 plus 195 180 plus 195 and it comes out to be 0 0.1844 or 18.4 percent so this is the relative efficiency this is the efficiency of the organic cycle is 18.4 percent and the efficiency of the cycle operating with the water as a working fluid comes out to be 25.6 per 26.5 percent